Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. If you would, can we stand together and have a word of prayer? I know we prayed a lot. And lots has been said here. I don't, I don't know. Somebody's reading my notes. Uh, don't know really need to preach all of this, but... But uh, it just verifies to me, you know, we serve one God, and that God talks to all of us. Amen. And that God's got a message to get out. He can share it to a whole lot of people at the same time. So, if you would, let's just, just lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we worship you tonight. We thank you, God, for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, that we call this your place, but it's all your place, God. We've come into what's designated as your house. And we thank you, Lord, for the word that's already been shared here, God. Lord, the songs that have been sung, the prayers that have been prayed, the things that have been, been spoken, testimony given, and Lord, just verifying who you are and, and what you've said over and over and over and what you've yet to say, yet to share with your church. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, I ask you, God, as, as, as we share tonight, God, as we share, with Lord, in your presence, we ask you by your spirit, God, to move and minister, Lord. Continue, Lord. God, to speak your word, God, speak it out and, and share it the way that you want it, it to be shared. Lord, I'm asking simply to, to hear from you tonight, Lord, that which you want to be said and said to your church. And God, we give you the praise for it. We give you the glory for it, God, ahead of time because we're expecting you to do something here by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to be reading out of uh, Isaiah 61st chapter and also out of the 4th chapter of Luke. I'll give you a couple minutes or so to get there. Brother Bill, I was going to ask you, you know, up until when I was asked to do it, Pastor Max, I've been reading the book of Isaiah. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As we've heard so many times, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you know, God's got a word to declare. I believe he's going to do something here tonight. And I was wondering, when I got to call the minister tonight, I, w I went in, as soon as I hung up the phone, I went into the bedroom, knelt down by the bed, and I, Lord, there's so many things that you've shown me and said to me recently that I thought would make good, good sermon material, make a good message, and right now, Lord, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> but God, what do you want said? What do you want done? And uh, I was just tickled to death to be able to kneel down by my bed because it occurred to me. I've been praying, but I've been praying in a lot of other positions. You know, as you know, I've had some back surgery and so I've had some problems with ankle and whatnot. And it just occurred to me. It's been probably well over a year since I've knelt down next to the bed and get back up without any problem. I was talking with somebody earlier today, and it kind of, I didn't realize when I was talking with them, all this is going to work together here. In Isaiah, the 61st chapter, I want to read the first three verses. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Trees of righteousness. That's what God had in mind. He wants us to be called trees of righteousness. In Scripture, Isaiah spoke out and he said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, but not because, not because I'm a prophet, 
Not because God likes me so well. Not because i got a bunch of talent. Not because I'm so smart. Not because I'm so pretty. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. And he goes on to all to the meek and explains all the, the bind up the brokenhearted. God has called each and every one of us. There's an anointing that the Spirit of God has to pour out upon God's people. And that anointing isn't just for the preacher. It isn't just for the, the guy standing in the pulpit, for the evangelist, for the missionary. There's an anointing that God's got for every one of his children. God's called every one of us to share his word. And as has been, it's been said tonight, we've got to get out and do it. We've got to speak his word. We've got to proclaim it. And he's given that anointing to us. But, you know, so often, so often we just kind of, in the church, I, I, maybe not here as a church, but in the church in general, we just kind of say, what? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, God's anointed. Yeah, I know God's anointed me. Real exciting, you know. Get real worked up about it. But as I said, I was talking to somebody today, and I mentioned to him something that we, we talked about in Sunday school. I told him that uh, I found it encouraging. And those of you that don't, not in the adult Sunday school, maybe this is news to you, I don't know. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, there was a decision made in the Southern Baptist count Conference. And it was a decision that reversed something that they had declared 10 years ago. 10 years ago, the Southern Baptists said that they would not allow missionaries who spoke in other tongues. Two weeks ago, they reversed that decision. They are accepting missionaries into their fellowship to come in and to preach, to minister, missionaries who speak in other tongues. They kind of got push, pushed into it because there's so many people that were getting saved, particularly in the area like around Africa, and, and you know, continents like that, that were getting saved and getting filled with the Holy Ghost and they were speaking with other tongues when the Baptists went in and they set up a church and there's, you know, people maybe not have to travel quite so far to go to church. And they go to the Baptist church and they come in there and they're, they're speaking in other tongues and they're working in the gifts of the Spirit. And they're kind of going, oh, gee, what do I do with this, you know? <laughs> Praise God. God is moving. He's moving. He's pouring out his spirit. And, you know, the word says, I, I know this is not exactly the right interpretation of it, but it encourages me because the word says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We're seeing brothers and sisters in Christ that, quote, don't believe in the gifts, starting to accept. And now we're seeing a denomination saying, well, uh, we're at, at least saying we'll tolerate it, you know. <laughs> and we, we got on to talking and mentioned, you know, that, uh, I forget what it was, some, something we were talking about in, off in the future. And I, I told this person, that, well, you know, if, uh, if Billy Graham's correct in what he says he's hearing from the Lord, you ain't going to have to worry about getting together with me in a couple years. And uh, you know, the lady said, well, what are you talking about? Is he predicting the end times or something? I said, well, not exactly predicting, you know, giving a date or anything. But, you know, he's, he said he felt like the Lord told him somewhere around 2016, this thing's going to start wrapping up. That's not, not calling a date. You know, the Word says we can know the season. And I, whether he's correct or not, I don't know. But this person said to him, he said, well, you know, I don't, I don't talk about that a whole lot to people. You know, and people get all, all upset about the rapture, and you start talking to them about, about rapture this, rapture that, and they, and they get all kind of goofy and silly, and they, they, you know, they kind of turn it off, and they don't, they don't want to hear that a whole lot. They think we're trying to set dates, and we're in some kind of big cult or something. But we, you know, we just need to get the word out and just need to talk to people and tell them how they, they need to live and that they need to commit their lives to the Lord and, and, and turn to him and all that. I said, well, you know, that, that's true. We need, we need to do that. We need to get the word out. We need to preach the word. We need to share the word. I said, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are sitting in church that they're not ready. Amen. There's a lot of people sitting in church every single service that are not even saved. And there's people that think they're saved, and they're not. And we got to talking about it and said, you know, one, one problem with people shying off talking about the rapture, it's the same problem that's at the basis of people sitting in church and, and, and not knowing the Lord. 
Because it says in the, in the Word that He's coming for those that are looking for Him. How are you going to look for Him if you're afraid to talk about the rapture? You're afraid to say it's coming soon. You're afraid to preach. You're afraid to, to publish the Word. I get it. I make it on my list. On my list of things to do. And I, I admit, I don't always do it. I miss sometimes. But it's on my list when I wake up in the morning to look. This could be the day. Amen. This could be the day. Amen. Folks, this could be the night. The next couple of moments could be the moment. Amen. You miss a lot of good places to say amen, you know. Amen. It could happen any, any time. Right. And Isaiah, although he wasn't talking about the rapture particularly taking place, he was talking about the, the fact that he was anointed to preach this gospel, to share this good news. And when Jesus came on the scene, we find early in the ministry of Jesus, he went out into the wilderness. He was tempted by the devil. He's, he'd been fasting. He'd been praying. He gets out there, and, and the devil, devil just kind of throws a little bit of everything up at him. You know, he tells him, well, uh, uh, why, don't, why don't you turn the rocks into stone? Or the rocks into yeah. <laughs> Turn the rocks into bread, stones into bread. If you're hungry, why don't you, why don't you uh, throw yourself off this cliff? You know, the, ain't says, the Lord says the angels will lift you up. He won the victory over the devil. I'm not going to go into the light. He won victory over that temptation the three times that the devil tempted him. And when the temptation of Satan was over, he came back into, into the, the area, and this is in Luke, the, the fourth chapter, and verse 14. The devil had ended the temptation. It says that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Keep, remember that. He taught in their synagogues. And he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. He gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. It says, all bear witness, wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, ye will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whosoever we have heard done in, or whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. He said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet's accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city in Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias' prophet. None of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that he might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Those scriptures, the scripture we read in, in Luke and the one in Isaiah, talk of the bruised, the brokenhearted. The words that are used in I, the scripture in Isaiah, bruised and brokenhearted, are two different words, but they have basically the same meaning. People that are, are crushed. And the brokenhearted being those that are just completely shattered. After having fasted, Winning victory, 
Jesus goes into the, the, the temple. He goes in and he begins to read this scripture.